WWE finalized its merger with UFC on September 12, 2023, and it wasn't long after that some superstars were shown the door. By September 22nd, some big names and major prospects were no longer under contract with the company. For quite a while, crowds were happy to chant in unison that WWE stood for Walk with Elias, but fans of this longtime member of the WWE roster will have to walk with a new name for the man once known as The Drifter. Elias' WWE career began in NXT in 2014 as Elias Sampson. He would quickly take on The Drifter persona, armed with a guitar and often strumming a tune before hitting the ring to face his opponent. He was involved in a series of high-profile feuds with the likes of Apollo Crews, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Finn Balor, but he never did reach main event level. Ultimately, Elias would drop a Loser Leaves NXT match to Cassius Ono, sparking speculation that he was main roster bound. He memorably wrapped up his time in WWE's developmental arm in 2017 as the masked luchador El Vagabundo, falling to Oni Lorcan before making his WWE Raw debut soon after. Making use of his legitimate musical talents, Elias was placed in spotlight interactions with the likes of Jeff Jarrett, John Cena, The Undertaker, and more. He even released an album, Walk with Elias, which reached number one on the iTunes charts. When the Elias character seemingly ran its course, vignettes aired, showing him burning his guitar and signifying a sort of rebirth. On the Raw, after WrestleMania in 2022, now clean-shaven and sporting a new haircut with wrestling trunks and Ultimate Warrior-esque armbands, he portrayed his own younger brother, Ezekiel, and began a feud with Kevin Owens. When that fizzled, the writing was on the wall and Elias, as well as Ezekiel, drifted away for good. But surely, he'll be back somewhere. Of all the names on the list of the most recent releases, Dolph Ziggler reached the biggest heights. His inclusion also solicited arguably the most collective surprise. Though he hadn't been featured prominently on television in quite some time, other than a run as NXT champion, Ziggler's pedigree is unrivaled among many of his peers. His status as a Triple Crown champion is probably enough to anoint him a first ballot WWE Hall of Famer. But on top of that, Ziggler has amassed six Intercontinental Championships, four Tag Team Championships, two World Heavyweight Championships, two United States Championships, an NXT Championship, a Money in the Bank briefcase win… he's basically done it all. The question now is not whether or not Ziggler can find a spot elsewhere in wrestling, but rather if he even wants to. Surely he could hop the fence to AEW and join his brother Ryan Nemeth in a heartbeat if he wanted to. He could go anywhere he likes, really, if he wanted to. But he has also moved on to other ventures, namely a stand-up comedy career, and all indications are he'll continue to pursue that passion. I get pinned by big sweaty guys, but I get paid millions of dollars when you do it. It's just for like Waffle House and a ride home. <laughs> With his legacy in WWE intact and hordes of fellow wrestlers chiming in on the news, his place in history is without question. Ziggler, or as he'll probably be known now, Nick Nemeth, can really call his shots from here on out. After multiple personas on WWE TV, Mace, or as he became known, Masse, will have to make his walk down someone else's runway for the foreseeable future. He got left in the dust along with Maximum Male Models stablemate Mansois when Maxine Dupree sided with Alpha Academy. Mace last appeared on WWE TV in a number one contenders battle royal for the Intercontinental Championship on May 15, 2023. Following a three year stint in NXT as Dio Madden, he became a commentator first on 205 Live before moving to Raw. That run ended abruptly when Brock Lesnar put him through the announce table with an F5. He wouldn't be seen again until an official main roster debut as Mace, part of the now infamous Retribution faction alongside Shane Thorne as Slapjack, Dominic Dijakovic as T-Bar, Mia Yim as Reckoning, and ever so briefly Mercedes Martinez as Retaliation, all led by Mustafa Ali, who somehow got to keep his name. When that group imploded, Mace and T-Bar continued on as a tag team until the 2021 WWE Draft, when they were split up, with T-Bar going back to NXT as Dijak. This ultimately led to Maximum Male Models, ever so briefly led by Max Dupree. Maxine entered the mix, then Max went back to being LA Knight. From there, Maxine split and there wasn't much left for the duo of model characters to do. A standout college athlete as an offensive tackle for North Carolina, Mace, real name Brennan Williams, was a third-round draft choice of the NFL's Houston Texans before his wrestling career, surely something that will aid his prospects in whatever he chooses to do next.
Long before his days as a maximum male model, Mansoor was Mansoor al Shihail, a Saudi Arabian native who secured a spot at the WWE Performance Center after trying out before 2018's Greatest Royal Rumble. Eventually, simplifying his name to just Mansoor, he'd shine in the spotlight at several of WWE's Saudi Arabia events, including winning a battle royal at Super Showdown 2019, defeating Cesaro at Crown Jewel in 2019, beating Dolph Ziggler at Super Showdown in 2020, and getting the better of Mustafa Ali at Crown Jewel in 2021. Mansoor enjoyed a 57-match winning streak to start his WWE career, largely on 205 Live and Main Event before losing his in-ring Raw debut to Sheamus, thanks to interference from Umberto Carrillo. This led to the storyline with a post-retribution Ali building to their match at Crown Jewel. And then came the model stuff. Obviously, Mansoor and Mace have big-time talent, and Maxine Dupree is a superstar through and through, so aligning with her was never a bad idea. The trio made the best of what they were given, using social media and a website to elevate their characters. But sometimes the creative winds blow in strange directions. With an international fan base, big-time personality, and plenty of runway in front of him, Mansoor will surely make the best of his next opportunity, wherever that may be. At a minimum, he and Mace are still clearly pals, streaming regularly together on Twitch. We're just trying to overcome adversity here so it means more when we finish the story. The saga of Mustafa Ali in WWE is well chronicled, with multiple reports of his asking for his release at one time or another. But his actual release came as a bit of a surprise nonetheless, because wouldn't you know it, he was actually doing something. He was in the midst of a program with none other than the ultimate heat magnet, Dominic Mysterio, and he had a title shot lined up for No Mercy when the news hit. That said, this does ultimately seem like what's best for both parties after a tumultuous run. Debuting for WWE in the Cruiserweight Classic in 2016, Ali showed enough fire in a first-round loss to Lince Dorado to earn a contract, participating in the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic as Dorado's partner and making his way onto 205 Live, which he parlayed into regular main roster appearances. That seemed to be going well until he simply disappeared from TV. After next to nothing for nearly nine months, he became the leader of Retribution, which tied Ali in as the mysterious hacker featured in vignettes for months prior. Of course, Retribution would lose immediately to the Hurt business on Raw, and again the following week, and at that point, it was clear they couldn't be taken seriously. Soon after, the group imploded. From there, things actually got better for Ali, especially in 2023, starting with an epic battle against Gunther at Night of Champions and a return to NXT that showed a ton of promise. But then, it was all cut short. Ali has plenty to offer to any promotion, and fans would be wise to keep an eye on AEW as a potential landing spot for him. Another of the recently released WWE superstars who went through several character incarnations is Daba Kato, the 6-foot, 9-inch, 350-pound former offensive tackle who had an in to the main roster following his pairing with Leo Rush at NXT Live Events in 2018. Making his official debut at the Greatest Royal Rumble, Daba Kato, then known as Baba Tunde, squared off against fellow big man Braun Strowman, who eliminated him from the match. Much like Mustafa Ali and Retribution, Daba Kato was a bit of a victim of circumstance during the pandemic era of wrestling, when, hey, at least companies were trying stuff. Daba Kato debuted under his new name on Raw Underground, where he smashed enhancement talent until another run-in with Strowman didn't go his way. That led to being drafted to Raw, although nothing ever materialized there. Fast forward to WrestleMania 37, where he aligned with Apollo Crews to help him secure the Intercontinental Championship, rechristening himself as Commander Aziz. The two would soon be sent back to NXT, where Aziz once again became Daba Kato, turning on Crews and having a few matches before disappearing into oblivion. It is fair to say that one company can only carry so many monster big men, and with WWE boasting a roster including Strowman, Omos, and others, Daba Kato was yet another victim of circumstance, or a numbers game, or maybe he just didn't show enough during his tenure. Either way, as an impressive physical specimen, it wouldn't be a stretch to think we'll see him resurface somewhere in the near future. One name that was initially reported to be among the releases was Tegan Knox, 
Though that turned out to be erroneous. A member of the women's roster who wasn't so lucky, though, was Dana Brooke, who made the most of all she was given, up to and including a recent reset in NXT. Her presentation incorporated elements of her competitive gymnastics and bodybuilding background, and she was paired with Emma as she feuded with Bayley during her first run in NXT. That affiliation endured into her main roster debut on Raw in 2016. The abrupt dissolution of that pairing after Emma suffered a back injury led to Brooke being intertwined with big names like Sasha Banks, Charlotte Flair, Natalia, and Bayley once more, although a high-profile run wasn't exactly in the works. Instead, Brooke became affiliated with Apollo Crews and Titus O'Neil, serving as the statistician for the mid-card Titus Worldwide stable. In recent years, Brooke enjoyed multiple WrestleMania appearances, but struggled to find storyline consistency until the 24-7 title, for better or for worse, came into play. Amid a romance angle between Brooke and Reggie, she managed to capture the now-defunct title 15 times, second all-time only to Our truths 53 reigns before fading from television for the most part. In 2023, Brooke returned to NXT, feuding briefly with Cora Jade and aligning herself with Kehlani Jordan prior to her release. Brooke penned a heartfelt thank you via X, formerly known as Twitter, following the news, assuring fans that the fairy tale continues. Who knows, maybe she'll try some other combat sport. Boxing's definitely on my bucket list. The unfortunate truth is that being released is nothing new for Emma. She had only just returned to WWE in October 2022 after a five-year hiatus from the company. Given that she had been back for less than a year, her 2023 release came as a surprise to some. That said, her appearances were few and far between following a re-debut that saw her accept Ronda Rousey's open challenge for the SmackDown Women's Championship. An NXT original and carryover from the rebranded FCW, Emma went down in history as a contender for the inaugural NXT Women's Championship in 2013, ultimately losing out to Paige. Her original main roster run included a lengthy alliance and on-screen relationship with Santino Morella, and another instance of falling short as Paige shined, losing a battle royal to determine the number one contender for the Divas Championship. Emma would return to NXT for more than a year beginning in early 2015, highlighting lighted by a match against Asuka for the NXT Women's Championship at NXT TakeOver London. Prior to her second return to the main roster, vignettes promoting her makeover to the more glamorous Emelina began to air, though the revamped gimmick was dropped almost immediately and after several stops and starts. She was released in October of 2017. Emma's more recent release came just as she was publicly getting excited about WWE's announcement that the Elimination Chamber Premium Live event would be held in her home country of Australia. Shortly thereafter, fans learned that her real-life fiancé, Riddick Moss, was also on the list of those cut. Sometimes life throws you a curveball, and in the case of Emma and Riddick Moss, sometimes you get a double whammy in the same day. At least Moss is keeping his head up, calling the end of his time in WWE a graduation. The 2022 winner of the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, Moss rose to prominence on the main roster alongside Baron Corbin, adopting the moniker of Madcap Moss alongside Corbin's Happy. But when those two split, it didn't seem as though there was much else for Moss on the horizon. Clearly, he envisioned something much different in his next venture. He tweeted, referring to Triple H by his real last name, I know a lot of people think my career really took a downturn once Mr. Levesque took over, but in actuality, my per-match fee skyrocketed through the roof. Other promoters, get ready to back the Brinks truck up. Moss's time with Corbin culminated in what was dubbed a last laugh match. Moss prevailed in that encounter, splitting the pair, and a bit of a push seemed to be in the works for him. Unfortunately, things didn't turn out that way. His main roster run peaked with championship challenges against Solo Sokoa and Gunther, both of which were unsuccessful. The smart money seems to be that Moss will land on his feet soon. Emma has a history with Impact Wrestling, so maybe both she and Moss could land there. From the world's greatest tag team to the gold standard, Team Angle to the Hurt Business, Shelton Benjamin has definitely made his mark on WWE history. Whether or not there is anything further for Benjamin in WWE is now very much up in the air following his release from the company. Among those released, Benjamin's experience is unparalleled. His time with WWE goes back to 2000, when he started in developmental and enjoyed a 10-year run. For seven years, he traveled the globe, working the independent scene, Ring of Honor, New Japan Pro Wrestling, and more before returning to WWE in August of 2017. He's a former United States champion, a three-time Intercontinental champion, and a three-time tag team champion. The general consensus seems to be that Benjamin is a surefire WWE Hall of Famer. 
He showed nothing but appreciation and gratitude in announcing his release on X, thanking WWE, its staff, and fellow talent, as well as the fans. Benjamin also indicated that nothing is over for him, saying, "...something ends, something new begins. Looking forward to my next chapter." While any promotion would benefit from having Benjamin on hand, at 48 years old, another full-time run somewhere might not be in the cards, despite being in phenomenal shape. Perhaps he would be best suited for a coach or producer role in an established company, needing veteran presence and savvy both in the ring and in the locker room. I am a extremely good pro wrestler. I do feel like I could have been a better WWE superstar. With a tenure dating back to 2015, Aaliyah is yet another talent whose potential didn't pan out as hoped. After spending six years in NXT, most of which was off of TV, she finally found some steam as part of the Robert Stone brand in the summer of 2020. Drafted to SmackDown, she captured the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships with Raquel Rodriguez. She also managed to set a Guinness World Record, pinning Natalya in just a shade over three seconds on an episode of SmackDown in her main roster singles debut. That feat led to Aaliyah 317 t-shirts and her own spin on Stone Cold Steve Austin's go-to catchphrase, but not much else. Her tag team title run with Rodriguez only lasted a couple of weeks, with Dakota Kai and Io Sky recapturing the championships exactly two weeks after losing them. Aaliyah was released without ever appearing on WWE television in all of 2023. Her last appearance on Raw was on September 12, 2022. As far back as 2015, it seemed as though the company had high hopes for Aaliyah, who was featured on the reality series Breaking Ground, which also showcased many other WWE superstars during their time in NXT. Those hopes Hopes were not realized in WWE, but there's certainly hope for her chances elsewhere. Top Della is yet another recently released superstar who has been released before. He was let go in November 2021 alongside his fellow Hit Row members Isaiah Swerve Scott, Ashanti The Adonis, and B Fab. In his August 2022 return with two of his three allies was a feel good moment and the first real indicator that WWE was in a new era of creative with Triple H in charge. Fast forward to a little over a year later, and the big man of the group is now no longer employed by WWE. Adonis and BFAB remain, so it will be interesting to see what becomes of Hit Row moving forward. As for Top Dalla, there's always his music to fall back on, but a return to the squared circle is far from being off the table. Hit Row didn't find a ton of success as a tag team in their second WWE run with Top Dalla and Adonis losing early and often. Top Dalla also had a hard time overcoming a botched top rope dive, with commentator Michael Cole often referring to him as Flop Dalla. One has to wonder whether or not Dalla might catch on in AEW to align or feud with Scott, now known as Swerve Strickland. With the ear-piercing squeal of a heavy metal frontman and some serious guitar chops, Rick Boogs made the perfect sidekick for Shinsuke Nakamura, if only for the added pizzazz to his entrance music and overall presentation. After a fairly unremarkable NXT career, his call-up to the main roster happened relatively off the radar, but Boogs caught on fast with fans and earned his way onto the WrestleMania 38 card alongside Nakamura, facing the Usos for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships in a losing effort. During the match, Boogs tore his quads, causing him to miss nine months rehabbing the injury. Boogs would return in early 2023, even getting a win against The Miz on an episode of Raw, but he faded away quickly after the WWE draft. Following his release, Boogs indicated that Vince McMahon leaving WWE killed his career, and that someone in the company holds a weird grudge against him. That aside, Boogs has the personality and physical prowess to take his talents elsewhere should he desire to do so, as evidenced by his series of Old Spice commercials in which he portrayed the outlandish characters Joseph Average and the Night Panther, his personality is beyond over the top. <sighs> Smells like winning. A reimagined character for Boogs might not be the worst idea in the world, but he'll likely have to gain some serious steam wherever he ends up. Following the insinuation of a grudge from on high and what seems to be shaping up as something of a burned bridge, it will take some doing for WWE to give him another shot down the road. After taking part in WWE tryouts held in Dubai in 2017, Shanky made his way to the WWE Performance Center in January 2020. Just a year later, he would team with Giant Zangir, Rey Mysterio, and Ricochet in an eight-man tag team match at Superstar Spectacle, a special television event airing in Shanky's home country of India. His team would prevail, and a few months later, Shanky and Veer would join forces with Jinder Mahal. 
While Veer remained on Raw and the company primed him for a singles run, Shanky and Mahal were off to SmackDown, and that's where things began to unravel a bit. Adding a traditional dance routine before and after his matches wasn't enough for Shanky to move the needle. Mahal would end up rejoining Veer and adding Sangha to form Indus Sheer while Shanky forged forward alone on SmackDown. Following an unsuccessful attempt at Gunther's Intercontinental Championship at Superstar Spectacle 2023, Shanky would make no further televised appearances. Indus Sheer has remained intermittently destroying other tag teams as they look to stake their claim among the ranks in the division. But now Shanky is gone, and reportedly that's largely because his in-ring prowess hadn't progressed as much as the powers that be would have liked. It is said, however, that Shanky was well-liked backstage, and with its presence in the Indian market more important than ever, perhaps Shanky will dance his way back to WWE before too long. Matt Riddle's WWE career can be described as volatile at best. With a pair of failed drug tests during his tenure and a series of allegations of inappropriate conduct with women, it seemed as though every time Riddle was heating up, something outside of the ring would bring him back down to earth. Riddle was much heralded following his time on the independent circuit, and his first WWE appearance, in which he was shown as a member of the crowd at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4, garnered plenty of excitement. In NXT, Riddle accomplished the fastest win in the promotion's history, defeating Cassius Ono in six seconds at TakeOver War Games 2. He also participated on Team NXT at Survivor Series and captured both the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic title and the NXT Tag Team Championships with Pete Dunne. His final match in NXT was a fight pit loss to Timothy Thatcher, with Kurt Angle serving as the special guest referee. Riddle's momentum continued through his main roster career despite his various controversies. Paired with the legendary Randy Orton in the Team RK Bro, Riddle became a two-time Raw Tag Team Champion and also captured the United States Championship. Riddle's release comes after yet another incident, this time a bizarre episode at JFK Airport in New York. Despite what seems like wasted potential, WWE Hall of Famer Booker T is not at all surprised at the news of his departure. You can get away with that kind of stuff only for so long. Yeah. Then it, gets, it catches up with you. Reports indicate that certain MMA promotions might be interested in the services of the former pro fighter, who has an 8-3 record in MMA fights. Big TV names aren't the only ones affected by releases. Sometimes those in various stages of development at the WWE Performance Center are part of the cuts, too. Brooklyn Barlow, who is featured on NXT Level Up, took to Instagram stories to announce her departure, saying she was grateful to have experienced the WWE universe and everything that comes along with it. Quincy Elliott, who made sporadic appearances on NXT since September of 2022, was also released. It has been reported that Elliott caused a number of issues backstage, including various social media controversies. Alexis Gray, a former track star at Texas Southern University, called her release baffling, but is determined to continue and see where wrestling may take her. Ika Manjiro was featured in the 2021 NXT Breakout Tournament before going on to pair with Kushida in the tag team Jacket Time. He was seen regularly on NXT Level Up until his release. Ulyssa Leone competed on 205 Live and NXT before suffering a torn ACL in late 2022. She made her main roster debut alongside Valentina Faraz on SmackDown in May of 2023, losing to NXT Women's Tag Team Champions Alba Fire and Isla Dawn. Daniel McArthur, a four-time NCAA All-American shot putter at North Carolina, also expressed his gratitude via Instagram stories. Bryson Montana, who also had NXT Level Up experience and one battle royal showing on NXT, teased a return to something familiar upon his release. Kevin Ventura Cortez, who competed alongside Javier Bernal against Indus Sheer on Raw in May 2023, noted on Instagram that he'd need to step away for now, but added, I've only just begun.